Welcome everyone. I'm Alison with Continental Bead Suppliers. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I want to share with you this lovely little book chain, which is a super alternative to a regular bookmark. I've used this great curb chain because it lies flat between the pages. I'm using our centerline feather seed bead charms with some Swarovski crystal to add a little sparkle, but feel free to use whatever beads you have on hand. To create this centerline feather bookmark, we will be using um, two of these um, centerline feather seed bead charms. The part number is K154. Um, you can see that they are two-sided, so plain on the back, and they have the nice kind of textured detail on the front, so two of those. We'll be using uh, 12 inches of the curb chain. The part number is CH879. Um, so this is going to act as the actual bookmark. I'm just going to be moving these out of the way at the moment so that we have some more space. Um, let's see, we're going to be using four of the six millimeter 21 gauge jump rings. The part number is JR6. So there's four of those. We'll be doing some wrap loops, so two of the one and a half inch 24 gauge head pins. Part number is H backslash P 1.5. A pinch of the Mayuki size 11 seed beads. Six three millimeter crystal beads. These ones happen to be Swarovski um, and I just have three of them here because I already incorporated them into this little sample here. 24 inches of um, Mayuki thread for each um, charm. It's probably a little more than you need but it's better to have a little bit left over rather than trying to start another thread. Um, a size 12 or 13 beading needle, a pair of uh, thread cutters or sharp scissors, a pair of chain nose pliers, pair of round nose pliers, pair of flat nose pliers, and flush cutters. So let's put these things just out of the way here for now so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, oh, and I forgot the two um, six millimeter uh, beads. These ones happen to be crystal pearls, so they're going to be a little charm on the end of the, the piece. So, and this is what we're going to be making. So you can see on the back, because I've got these, these three millimeter beads on here, they're actually raised up out of the channel a little bit. So the, the seed beads aren't actually sitting in the channel, everything's kind of raised up, but it adds another uh, dimension. So I think they're really rather sweet. So um, that's the, the only reason why that's not sitting in the channel there. You can use Delica beads in place of the seed beads, so size 11 Delicas will work as well. Um, I just happen to like the texture of, the, of the, the actual little squished round seed beads. So there we go. Okay, so the way that we start this off is with your thread here. You're always working from um, to start off from the back of the piece. So it's much easier knowing what's going on here, having this texture on the front. So we'll, we'll always kind of have that facing us. So we're going to start by working um, in from the back to the front through this hole that's at the bottom of the channel here, this first hole. So not the hole that's right down at the end. That's what's going to be used for a charm to hang on the end. Um, so we're going into this this hole here. So take your thread through and leave yourself about a six inch tail. So there we go. So we're going to pick up six of the seed beads. Six 
six and then the three crystals and then six more seed beads you can move them down onto your thread or you can just go directly into the hole so it's the little hole that's just below the loop here so just thread that through make sure that you're holding onto the tail otherwise if we miss that we're just going to lose all the beads again let's just move this out of the way too um, one second I'm changing on my glasses so that I can see where we're at here that's better it's always good if you can see what you're doing um, so this thread now is going to come back up through the channel here so you can see here I'm I'm just bringing the needle back through here and bringing it sort of snugly there and then we're going to go down through all these beads again so from top to bottom you can do this in one run like this or if it's if you have to separate it there's no problem with that either so here we go and now we're going to go from front to back through that same original hole. So not the channel, just the, the little hole by the channel. And then we're going to come from back to front up through the channel. It doesn't matter which side of the beads it goes on. But we're coming up again. And then we're going to go back up through all the beads once more. Still keeping hold of the tail here. Now what we're aiming to do is actually fill this, the holes of the beads in to kind of make this a little bit more substantial. So once again we're going from front to back through that little hole below the loop. And then we're going to come back up from back to front through the channel. back down through all the beads again and again you might so you can see here I can't get through all the beads in one go here so I'm going to just pull that through and then continue on with the seed beads again So now you're coming out the end here, excuse me, through the end. Back down through the hole that's just above this little hole on the bottom there. Again, back up through, from back to front, up through the channel, so you can see where I'm going there. And then we'll go back up through the beads from bottom to top if you find it gets a little bit tricky to try and get the needle through you can take your flat nose pliers and just give it a little wiggle here sometimes you kind of have to push the push the seed beads just up a wee bit so that they do, it doesn't get caught on the um, framework of the feather. So just pull that through and again if it, if it gets a little bit stuck you can use your flat nose pliers just to pull the needle through here. We'll see if we can do it one more time. So we're going to go from front to back through that little hole. From back to front up through the channel and I think we'll just probably go part way down now so through the seed beads see if we can get as far as the crystals 
there we go so it's coming out at the crystal there and by now you can feel that this is getting really quite tight so you don't want to force something you don't want to be cracking beads and crystals but um, that should just slip through there and then I'm going to cut this cut this tail off here uh, with my thread cutters there we go And we're going to, so you can see I just basically used 12 little seed beads in this um, thing here. So now we've got this tail that's on the reverse here. So I'm just going to thread that, thread the needle back up again. And an easy way to get the thread to work is just to flatten the end with, with the um, flat nose pliers. Add that back up. So now you can see that we're on the reverse here. I've got to bring the thread through um, onto the front. So we're coming up through the channel. Let's put that through carefully. And then go back up, perhaps as far as the crystals again. We'll see how, how far we can get. And I'm going to have to push that through with the... With the uh, flat nose pliers. That's the good thing about beading needles, they're pretty flexible so you can kind of get into some awkward spots there. So just pull that through. And it's nice and snug. Because there's no pressure being put on these beads, it really, you don't have to tie a knot, you don't have to use any glue or anything, you just want to try and fill the holes a little bit with the number of thread passes. So we're going to trim this um, tail off now, so with my thread cutters, you just kind of pull the thread a little bit and it makes a nice neat little element there. So here we've got the two elements. So the next thing that we're going to do is to make um, a little charm to go on the end here. So I'm going to do this as a wrap loop. So we will be putting on the head pin, putting the, the crystal pearl onto the head pin and I'm going to make a little wrap loop. So for that, the way that I do it, there's lots of different ways to do it, but this is the way that I've done it for many years. So I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and just put the wire into the plier right at the tip. Push the head pin back to 90 degrees. So you've got that nice sharp angle there. Take the round nose pliers. I just want this to be a, a, a neat little a neat little loop. So I'm almost sitting in the right angle part here. I don't know if you can see that without it. There we go. So basically I'm working with the narrow part of the pliers parallel to the table. So I'm going to bring the wire up over the top until it touches the bead. Hold onto the bead with my non-dominant hand, loosen the pliers, quarter turn now so that the fat part of the plier is parallel to the table, twisting the wire directly underneath the plier. And then I'm just going to take this plier out so you can see already that we've got a nice little circle there. I'm going to go across the loop now. I'm going to take my round nose pliers then I'm just going to twist the wire round from underneath the loop down towards the bead. Keep a good grip on that. So each wrap is following the previous one. Just trim that off. With the flush cutters. Oops. There we go. And then just if there's a little bit of spring back on the wire, you just kind of tweak it in with the chain nose pliers. Okay, so that's one. 
Let's do the other one. So again with the chain nose pliers, right at the tip, just push the wire away from you to form your 90 degree angle. Swap up to the round nose pliers. Coming up over the top till the wire touches the bead. Quarter turn, push the wire under. And then we'll go around with the round nose pliers. So again, each wrap is following underneath the previous one. And trim that off with the flush cutters. So there we go, we've got the two little charms made. So I'm going to use my chain nose pliers and I happen to have the, the flat nose here too. So we're going to take one of these jump rings, these six millimeter jump rings and just open that up. Pop that on there. And then to the bottom of the charm. Close that back up. And again, making sure that everything is nice and flush. I just check, always check the jump rings with my nail just to make sure that that's, that's okay there. So that's one charm on. Take another jump ring. Open this up. Pop the little pearl on there. Pop this one on. And making sure that that's nice and flush. There we go. So we've got that on too now. Let's get rid of these little things here. So now we're going to be attaching the, um, the curb chain to these little charms. So the thing with this is just to make sure that when you're attaching the charms on to make sure they're both facing the same way is that you keep the curb lying flat so we'll take the next ring and open this up we're going to put this jump ring into this top loop here and then attach onto the last link of the curb chain and close this back up Again, making sure that's nice and flush. And then we'll take the other end. So again, just making sure that this is, is lying flat, just run it through your fingers so that we know that those links are all in the correct position. Take the last jump ring, open it up. Pop this onto, whoops, pop this onto here. And onto the last link of the chain. Close that up again. And there we go. So this is the lovely little bookmark. So I'll take a photograph of it in place. But I think that looks really like a lovely um, present for a, a reader. Um, and again, very versatile. These little elements can be used in so many different things. But I just thought I'd show you a, a different project to, to do rather than earrings or, or something like that. So I hope you like it. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, we love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.